Let me ask you a question about vulnerable sure. narcissism. Yeah. So do they not externally appear like the typical narcissist? Um, and are a lot of them borderline crossovers? So this is a really important question because it brings up another way of thinking about narcissistic pathology, which is according to level of organization. So the short answer to your question is yes. Those with higher functioning narcissistic pathology tend to have a stable grandiose self, to um, be often quite charming and successful, uh, the kind of people that you gravitate to in social gatherings, lots and lots of superficial acquaintances, often you know very successful at work, and to hide their vulnerability quite well. Over time in treating these patients, we do see the vulnerability um, breaking through. And that's why I think it's important to treat these patients long term. You know, if you're just going to treat them short term, particularly with a high functioning narcissistic person, you're not going to see the vulnerability. Those with vulnerable narcissistic presentation, they tend to be more in the borderline level of functioning. By that, I don't necessarily mean BPD. I mean that they have a shakier sense of identity. They tend to have more troubled relationships with others, either very uh, constricted, unsatisfying relationships or stormy relationships with others. They tend to have uh, more ethical lapses in moral functioning. Uh, they tend to have poor reality testing and to use more primitive defenses. So those are the things that go along with what we call borderline organization. And those with vulnerable narcissistic presentation tend to be more in that borderline realm. Sometimes they also have co-occurring BPD with all the signs and symptoms of BPD. Then there's another group with narcissistic pathology, which we talk about as malignant narcissism. And those with malignant narcissism have a pathological grandiose self that also is infiltrated with extreme paranoia, much more severe antisocial traits, and very poor reality testing. Interesting thing about malignant narcissism, though, is those individuals can also function at a higher level. They can be quite stable. They can be world leaders, unfortunately. So I can't say that those three levels are, one is super high functioning, one is medium, borderline level functioning, and one is more severely disturbed functioning. I have seen those who have malignant narcissistic pathology who really are transiently psychotic and really lose touch with reality. But I've also seen individuals with malignant narcissism who function at a very high level. But those are three variants of narcissistic pathology. So that's why I said we're not talking about one thing here. We're talking about a disorder that has multiple faces and presentations. But the common themes are an inability to regulate normal narcissism, which leads to these distortions in the personality. And that can occur at many different levels and in many different ways.